So people have been responding to this Atlantic article. Let's declare a pandemic amnesty. We need to forgive one another for what we did and said when we were in the dark about COVID. By Emily Oster. Well, Emily, some of us weren't in the dark about COVID and therefore have nothing to apologise for. And despite not being a scientist or a doctor or an epidemiologist or an immunologist, I was able to conduct my own research by interrogating the actual available data as far back as March of 2020, and I knew then that COVID was basically a load of bollocks and that none of the pandemic policies were necessary. So, what's your excuse? I could have called this video, We Must Never Forget, but the truth is, we will never forget. How could we ever forget how poorly we were treated and the evil we endured during the COVID oppression of 2020? 2021 and the beginning of 2022. I woke up midway through March of 2020, which was two weeks before the first lockdown was declared. I realised that something was seriously amiss with the mortality figures we were being given, and that there was clearly something fishy going on with how COVID deaths were being classified on death certificates. The median age of death was over the age of life expectancy in my country, and the coronavirus COVID-19 appeared to have a 99.97% survival rate, which was in line with the regular flu. So why did we shut down the world for that? Of course, I used the word appeared, because upon further investigation, we learned from archive videos of the inventor of the PCR test, Carrie Mullis, that PCR was not a tool for testing if someone was sick. With a high enough cycle threshold, you could pretty much find anything in anyone if you wanted to. This was a research tool and not a diagnostic tool. We also never witnessed people dropping dead in the streets like we saw in China. We weren't tripping over dead bodies in our towns and cities. The hospitals were empty and nurses and doctors appeared to be busy learning and performing dance routines. We were restricted from moving beyond two kilometers and then later five kilometers from our homes by the police, a police force that would later gaslight us by traveling the length and breadth of our country to perform their own viral video dance routine. Don't forget Jerusalem. Throughout the world, anti-lockdown protesters, which is to say people standing up for their inalienable human rights, were receiving unbelievable levels of police brutality. That's a topic for a whole other video. Western governments suspended our civil liberties, regulated how many people could meet in a room privately. Let's not forget that. They legislated for how many people could meet in a person's home. They shut down places of worship. They shut down businesses. And when they allowed them to reopen, they told the likes of pubs, cafes, bars and restaurants that they needed to limit the numbers allowed in. They had this ridiculous nine euro meal regulation and you couldn't stay more than like a hundred minutes. Remember that? You had to book a pub in advance. During some of the various lockdown levels, pubs and restaurants had to open out onto the street because apparently the virus, I guess, lived inside the building or something. While you were expected to wear a mask when walking to and from your table, like going to the bathroom or waiting to be seated, apparently the virus just knew when you were sitting down and then left you alone. For a time, they even banned live music for some reason. Face masks, which do nothing to stop the spread of a virus, were mandated on public transport, shops and certain workplaces. People were denied the right to visit their dying elderly relatives in hospitals and care homes, where they were basically left alone to die, largely due to lack of adequate care. COVID became the primary concern of the healthcare industry, and thus people with long-term illnesses were told to basically put up and shut up at home, as cancer screenings were delayed, and as a result, we will now see a huge wave of cancer deaths from people who didn't receive the treatments they needed over the past few years. The populace were terrified by fear-mongering propaganda on the mainstream media that was based on obviously flawed science to anyone who took, like, 10 minutes to investigate further. When many people were tested for COVID and had a positive COVID result in hospitals, for example, they were placed on the likes of remdesivir and midazolam and then put on a ventilator, which killed many of them. This was like a real-world Milgram experiment. The flu all but disappeared, and positive COVID PCR and antigen tests were used to justify lockdowns in what became known as a kind of a case-demic. Doctors, scientists, and healthcare workers who spoke out against the mainstream COVID narrative were cancelled, demonised, and censored. The experimental and highly toxic COVID jabs were effectively mandated in a huge amount of settings for travel and in many workplaces, and vaccine passports were introduced to coerce people further into taking them. 
First, it was two. Then it became the regular boosters to accompany the conveniently timed arrival of the variants. New COVID variant, new booster. The unjabbed were demonised, ridiculed and ostracised from society, treated like second-class citizens and denied access to many social venues. Some of us highlighted the dangers of the jabs, as explained by the information provided by censored and cancelled doctors and scientists who blew the whistle on the experimental mRNA technology contained within them. We warned people. We told them that the lockdowns and scaremongering was all a marketing campaign for the jab rollout, and that looking at the true mortality data and looking beyond the case-demic suggested something truly nefarious was at work. That if the population was being led to a mass campaign of injections that they didn't need, then the purpose of those injections probably wasn't good. But we were not listened to. Tragically, most people blindly trusted their governments and the so-called science and the experts without question or further scrutiny. Families and friendships were torn apart because some of us had the temerity to disagree with the television, do our own research, and question the true severity of the alleged virus, the proportionality of the regulations, the need for lockdowns, and the safety and efficacy of the jabs. I've lost count of the number of died suddenly stories in the media of late, heart complaints being among the most common, myocarditis cases having increased exponentially, but also blood clotting, strokes, paralysis, and autoimmune issues. We're apparently not allowed to observe the obvious connection between those who got jabbed and their sudden adverse reactions and or deaths that follow. The media remains silent on the obvious correlation, and our governments, who pushed people into taking the jabs, refuse to acknowledge the damage that's been done, almost like the harm they caused was their intention from the beginning. And there's no way of knowing what the long-term harm these jabs will have done to the hundreds of millions of people who took them, including on the potential damage to people's fertility. Everything about what we endured was anti-human. It was pure cold, malicious evil, designed to cause maximum suffering and distress. It was totalitarian, insidious, manipulative, and I believe also, ultimately, genocidal. And the COVID story isn't over. It is merely one plot thread in a wider, long-running story arc where an unseen global cabal intend to utterly enslave and control those who remain in the future. For all these reasons and more, there can never be a pandemic amnesty. There never was a pandemic anyway. There was only ever a war on the population. There's no truce to be established here. We didn't pick a fight with anyone. The fight was picked against us. There's no two sides to the story. There was one side that picked on the victims. There was a vocal group of Covidian cultists who bought into the Covid lie, who relished in the persecution and othering of dissenters and the unjabbed. They wanted us ostracized and to have no access to work, social venues, travel or healthcare. I don't have any sympathy for those people. They were the useful idiots of the regime. Now I do have sympathy for the children who couldn't consent to being jabbed. Their parents made that decision for them. I also have sympathy for the bewildered elderly who were bombarded with COVID propaganda and who have trusted the mainstream media and authority all their lives. They were susceptible to the conditioning and the fear-mongering and they needed to be protected against it. But there are a few factions who we can never forgive or forget because justice has not been done for all those who have suffered and died as a result of the policies forced upon us, and the two years that were stolen, all those businesses that have gone under, all that time lost that we will never get back. The first faction is obviously the globalists and institutions and organizations behind the global conspiracy, including pharma. Secondly, our governments for enforcing it on their behalf, the mainstream shill media for pushing the lie and refusing to do actual investigative journalism, and finally, The Covidian cultists, I mentioned, who preached the lie like it was a religion and who demanded the rest of us comply or else we should be treated like heretics and pariahs and denied our most basic human rights. Only the foolish would forgive and forget all of this.